starting up the stream. Looks like the stream's going. Hi everyone, I'm TigerHawk D3, and today we are going to implement a deck. And by implement, I mean we're going to improve the implementation that I already have. Um, first of all, uh, a deck, D-E-Q-U-E, is an um, is uh, stands for double-ended queue. Q meaning you add an item to a queue, like a, like standing in line, and then uh, when you remove something from the line, it comes out of you know whoever was first. So you have the the beginning of the line, then you add someone, and you add someone, and you add someone or an object or whatever, and then when you take something out, you take it out of this end. Pretty pretty common. Uh, this differs from a stack which is uh, uh, last in, first out. So you have a, a stack of plates. And when you put a plate on the top, the easiest way to get a plate out of that stack is to get the most recent one you put in there. If you want a plate from the bottom, it's, uh, it's awful. Speaking as someone who occasionally wants one of the other plates in the pile of plates, because they're all different styles and whatnot. But uh, a double-ended queue, in particular, uh, is as it says double-ended. You don't don't just have to put items in at one end and remove from the other. You can add items to either end and remove from either end. And uh, we're going to implement this with a, a linked list, meaning uh, instead of the the entire object having an idea of itself, uh, like a like a list or an array, uh, each object in it is going to point to the ones next to it. So it's like a, a scavenger hunt. Uh, a list or array would be like uh, you get a list of all the items in the scavenger hunt and then you can go looking for whichever one you want and you have an idea of everything. A linked list would be uh, you get a piece of paper that says one item on it. And so you find that item and when you find that item, it has another piece of paper that says the next one is something else over here, and find that. So that's the, the general idea of a linked list. Uh, and so each of these objects that points to the ones next to it is going to be a class by itself, a, a node. And a node will have uh, the next element and the prior element and uh, or the next node and the prior node, and we'll have the element, the object it's supposed to hold. Uh, if it's at the beginning or the end, it may not have a self.next or self.prior. They may be just none. Okay. So when I create a DQ, uh, a deck, double-ended queue, uh, I have a, a count which is the number of objects that this deck is going to contain. I set the first and last to none. Uh, and this is uh, this first and last are to keep track of each end of the queue. Because if I want to access one end, I'll have to know which node is last or first or whatever. And then I can add and I can make a new link or break a link or whatever. Uh, and I have items and this is uh, uh, an arbitrary uh, argument list uh, so you're not going to send it like a list or something you're going to send it multiple arguments uh, so if you do have a list of items that you want to change into a deck you'll have to unpack it with star uh, so if you do pass that then it goes through it and just appends so say we have the front of the line over here uh, here's, here's the front with nothing in it. Uh, it's going to append an item, and here's our append method, and it will put something there, and it will put something next to it, put something next to it. This is the standard append. Uh, maybe it would make more sense to have it on the other side. Because uh, the, the regular append uh, is from the right, basically, and append left is uh, the other side. So we have for you append, app 
append to the right, and we can append on the left as well. This is the left for you. Um, uh, in the description, I have links to the um, the documentation for Python's uh, collections .deck. and um, that just has a bunch of methods and behaviors listed that we're going to try to reproduce, emulate, generally. Um, I originally had different names. Instead of uh, append, I had push. Uh, and instead of append left and pop left, I had uh, uh, shove for someone shoving their way to the front of the line, and uh, leave when someone at the end just decides to leave. But uh, this is more likely to be uh, understandable for people, because it's the way the Python one works. Uh, so if I append an item, and this is the, the actual data that I'm interested in, so I, I save a pointer to the, the last item in the list, and uh, if there is a last item, um, meaning if there is anything in the list, basically, uh, then I say, uh, uh, so if there is a node at the end already, then I will say this node's next node is, uh, is this, I will make a, a new node with this item, and then I'll put that into the last one's next item, and then into the last. This is a chained assignment. Uh, assignment in Python goes left to right. So I'll say the, the last node has something next coming after it. And now I will say the last thing is this new node. So the, this is the, the old last one that now has a something after it and is no longer last. And so the thing that is last is what we just added. Um, and this new last item has something that came before it, the prior item, and it's the old last item. Uh, if there is nothing in the list, basically, um, we say the, the first and last item are this one, this new node that we create. Um, we increase the, the count so we can keep track of the, the length. That's going to be important later. And this is uh, this is a slight departure from the, the actual implementation. Uh, when you append or append left in the actual collections.deck, it, uh, it returns none. It just modifies the data structure and returns none, pretty standard. But this returns the data structure itself and the item in a tuple. I actually uh, buh, buh, buh. like this. I have a bunch of, uh, this is my little test dealy. I make a deck, and then I append a one and a two and a three. Uh, I print adding two decks. So here we have uh, the self, and this is just printing the thing that's returned, which is a two-item tuple. And the first one is the um, uh, the representation of the deck, and the other one is the item that I added. So I have a deck of one, because I added one, now I have one, I added two, now it has one and two, I added three, now it has one, two, and three, and then uh, this plus itself is one, two, three, one, two, three, and then I add four onto the left, this is an append left, so I have four over there, and then I have five on the left, and six, and then I pop left, and I remove the six, uh, and so on. So this is... This is what I am doing with this uh, return self and the item. Instead of 
just not having this line at all, which is probably what it will eventually be. I really like the idea of method chaining. Um, uh, instead of sending something to a whole bunch of nested functions. Uh, uh, for example, zip map int uh, map string whatever, and then you have then you have to start from the the middle, the inside, and work your way out, which is generally working toward the left, which is backwards from the way people normally read. So, because uh, on on the right you just have a whole bunch of closing parentheses. Whereas with method chaining, uh, things return themselves. Generally, you have a return self at the end. So you can have an object dot do something, dot do the next thing, dot and so on and so on. And then you can read it left to right without having a whole bunch of uh, parentheses at the end. So I kind of like that. Although I will probably get rid of this to make it uh, a little more consistent with what you would expect. Uh, we looked at append. Let's look at append left. It's going to be very similar. Instead of last, we have first. Instead of last.next and last, we have first.prior and first. Instead of last.prior, we have first.next. Instead of first and last, uh, this is the same. Count plus equal one, return self item because it's just adding something to the other end. Instead of putting something on the right and having a new last item, we're putting something on the left and having a new first item. Uh, same thing for pop and pop left. Uh, pop, we're going to save a reference to the thing that's last for now, because that's what we're going to want. Um, if there's nothing there, because we have an empty deck, we're going to return self and none. Uh, ordinarily, this would be uh, an error, a traceback, because uh, you're trying to remove an item from an empty iterable. It doesn't like that. Probably going to change that to an exception at some point, but for now, it'll it'll be okay. Because um, maybe you want to hold a none object in a node. And, uh, and then you wouldn't know if you successfully, successfully removed a non-object or failed to remove something else. Trying to pop from an empty deck and successfully removing a none from a deck that wasn't empty have the same result. So I don't know. Uh, we will have a new last. And that's the, the current last one's prior node. Now, now that's the last. And uh, if we have something, if it wasn't none, uh, then we say this last one's next node is none. We reduce the count. If we end up with an empty deck, because self is the, the deck item itself, um, and we say also the first is none. And then we return self and the element that we wanted. Ordinarily, this would only return the element. Uh, but if you have self, then you can chain the method if you want. I could have done d.append1 uh, bracket 0 dot append two bracket zero dot append three because it would the the zero is it's uh, required to access the 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 queue itself the deck uh same thing for pop left instead of last we have first uh same thing same thing instead of last and last dot prior we have first and first dot next Instead of last, we have first. Instead of last.next, we have first.prior. Pretty similar. First is last. Very, very similar. 
I've already added a few convenience methods. Uh, these are the, the special method names that Python has. Uh, these get called automatically when you use certain Python syntax. Like if you try to print an object, it will attempt to retrieve its, uh, it will call this method on the object and uh, and you will see whatever it returns. Um, so for the string, I have it basically doing the same thing as repro and repro is just repro of the string. I didn't really know what else to do. Um, and this is going to have dq so we can make an item of this type and it's going to join with commas the repro of each item. And this uh, this is what we see. Not over there. Over here. So we have quote dq and this is five, four, one, two, and seven. And this would allow you to make another deck. If you wrote this in an interpreter session, you would get that deck object back. Because um, it's one argument for each element instead of uh, what the Python one does. Uh, D. Oh, I already had it up here. Um, deck, and then surrounded in square brackets because it takes uh, a single argument, which is an iterable containing all the items you want. So my version doesn't have the square brackets because you don't need to make it a single object list. You can just send it multiple arguments. Uh, uh, iter, a uh, repro is when, uh, is what's called by the, the REPR built-in function, which is, uh, let me show you a, a thing. Um, differences, differences, print hello. So this is the, we have the string hello, and we are seeing the string representation, which is H-E-L-L-O. But if we print the repro of hello, we get quotes around it because if you want to reproduce this string, you need to include quotes. If I just entered this at the interpreter prompt, uh, it would look for an object named hello. It's not the same thing. I would need quotes to get this object back. So that's what repro does. Uh, uh, iter is uh, something that gets called when you try to iterate over an object, uh, like with a for loop for item in D or whatever. And that would, uh, that would prompt this. And this is how it knows what to do when you try to iterate over it. Uh, it either returns an iterator of an empty string, with a, which is nothing if it's empty, uh, or we'll say we'll start with the first one. And uh, do I need this stuff? While current.next. Uh, we have the first. I don't think I need to do, I think I can just while current, current on element. And then next, I don't, I don't think I need that. Let's try that again. See what I get. Should, should still work. Yep. It's, it's good. It's fine. Happy times. I don't have to also save the next one and print again. Just get the first one yield that, and then say we're looking at the next one. 
and if the next thing is none, because this uh, current dot next was none, it's the end, then uh, we're done. So that's that's already better. Uh, we have a len, which is uh, what gets returned when you ask for the the len of an item, and that's the self dot count that we that we keep track of everywhere here. Uh, we have bool, which is what gets called when you're trying to determine whether an object is truthy or falsy, like uh, if my object. Uh, now by default. A, um, a user defined, an instance of a user defined class is always truthy. I can show you this. I will show you this. So I have my class, uh, pool, object of the class. It's true. There's nothing in it really. All we have is pass the empty statement. And uh, it's true, so that's that's what it is. But sometimes we want it to be false, like if there's nothing in there. So we will say it's going to return the boolean value true or false of uh, the length of the object, which could actually just be sub dot count because len would then call this and return a self.count. We can just use self.count, that's fine. Add is what happens when you have one object plus another object using the plus symbol. And that's gonna make a new deck and it's going to unpack itself as a whole bunch of arguments and it's going to unpack the other one as additional arguments. This only works in Python 3.6. If you don't have Python 3.6, get Python 3.6. If you're using a machine that cannot handle 3.6, like uh, I have a netbook running XP and 3.5 and up don't work on XP. They just, there's like a little warning uh, on the official website that 3.5 and 3.6 just don't work on XP. Uh, find a slightly newer machine or dual boot a, a newer operating system or something. I don't know, 3.6 is pretty cool. So if I wasn't able to unpack multiple things, then I would have to set up a, a generator expression like item uh, for object in self other for item in object. It'd just be larger. And this is, uh, this is very clear and very concise and very nice. Here's our node class, and this is what's going to contain each uh, actual datum that we want. So it has an element, and by default it's none, and uh, it sets, sets the next and prior to none, because uh, next and prior are going to get uh, values maybe when we add it to the deck. Here's something else we'll change. Uh, it has a string, which is going to be the string representation of the element. And it has repro. Originally, I wanted to be able to reproduce the node. Like you type this into the interpreter and you have the, the node, but you cannot do that because if a node has a next thing, then that next one has a prior one, which is itself. And so you're printing, you know, you're reproducing this and inside the, the next thing that you'd want to send to it maybe would be the next one. And inside that one, you'd have prior, which you'd want to reproduce and be this one. And it just, you get infinite recursion. So it's not good, but I will be slightly changing this. Um, this is just so it eats up extra arguments. And here's what I'll do. And I'm going to use a format string because of course I will. Also only in 3.6. Um, Self.element. 
And here, we want either the, this is going to be a node. So if there's no node, it'll be none. But if there is a node, then I don't want to try to access it in any way. I just want to have some other value. Now in Python, something you can definitely do and will not break your machine, you can do L equals some list. And then you can do L dot append L. And then you can look at the repro L. And we have an ellipsis to indicate that it goes on forever. And it works fine. So that's what we're going to do. Ellipsis. And that is the that is the ellipsis object. That's the ellipsis object. So um self dot uh does it matter which order we have prior and next? I don't think so. How about prior dot element? No, we don't necessarily know. Self dot prior. And something. So if self dot prior has a, a node there, then it will be truthy. We'll say, okay, this is truthy and something else. And then it will return the second thing. So if there's something in there, it'll just give us an ellipsis. But if self.prior is none, then uh, we have an and here and we know it's not going to be true because we already had something that was falsy. So that'll just give us none if it's none or ellipsis if it exists. Self dot, um, uh, next and Do I do I look at nodes at some point? I don't I don't think I really do. Let's uh let's print a node at some point. Print d dot last. Let's print d dot last dot prior. Actually. Uh okay. It's, it's none. Is it first, next, the last one in line, and then next. Next is what I wanted. This should print an actual none. Uh, here's, here's what I'm doing, and it's not doing what I thought it would. Uh, none and also printed none. Uh, oh, because it's, it's doing print. Duh. Why is it none for both, though? D dot last is a node. Let's do uh, the repro of that. Still none, huh? Was it prior? Uh, why isn't it doing what I thought it would? D dot last is a node. Is it empty? No, it's not empty. It has uh, it has eleven. Oh, there's no next or prior. That that would do it, wouldn't it? So it has a node with eleven and none and none. How about uh, d dot append twelve? And then print d dot last again. And twelve ellipsis. 
this? I didn't. I didn't want the actual. I didn't want the word. I wanted the dot dot dot. I got it. Sweet. The Mighty Hunter. I'm really not fond of bugs. They fly around, and they're annoying, and they carry, like, diseases and whatnot. No fun. I have a bug lamp, but every time it kills a bug, it has this gigantic zap that's incredibly loud and if I'm like doing something on my computer like playing a game or whatever I kind of jump in my chair and like press buttons that I didn't really want to because uh, it's it's really loud it's like a gunshot but it's electricity so I have it off right now because it's it's night um how do I get it oh this is the repro isn't it let's do this. Uh, nope. It's all ellipsis. I didn't actually want that. Let's let's just do that. I don't I don't actually care. Great. Now it should do what I want. My OBS is saying encoder overloaded. There we go. Dot dot dot. Means there's something there that isn't none, but we can't look at it, or else we would look at it, and then it would look back, and we would go back and forth forever, and it would be really, really bad. we done so far we've uh what did we change uh, i think we changed the the while loop for iter so we factor the iter um, I gotta write a commit message at some point, so I, I wanna remember what I'm doing. Refactor bool. That's this what's it, that's self.count instead of the length. Um, and rewrite the repro method. note okay great and this is a DQ great cool excellent I wrote it down uh, what will we do next I've been just talking about this and making minor changes for over half an hour um, Let's try to actually do stuff. Append, append left. Pop and pop left. How about clear? I don't think that'll be too hard. Uh, we remove, because the deck itself only knows these things. It knows the count. It knows the first item, the first node, I mean. It knows the last node. And that's it. Everything else is uh, references between nodes. So let's write a clear method. last equals self dot first equals none and self dot count equals zero
and it will it will return none. I think that's good. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> um, count count the number of deck elements equal to x. Let's do that. Ooh, no copy and copy and count. Let's uh, let's do both of those. Copy and. taking two classes in a local junior college, uh, third quarter of Java with the data structures and algorithms, and uh, computer architecture which focuses on hardware and MIPS assembly. So uh, yeah, uh, JC Api in chat says, yeah, super easy. It was. So I've been using Java and MIPS assembly where these would take actual time to write instead of just it's like just go through all the items and unpack it and and then you're done so well that, that was, that's copy i guess weird turn some uh This needs count and item. Sum of uh, item equals element for element in self. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, JC Api says, yeah, but I don't understand the higher languages yet. Huh. So, high level languages refers to languages that are farther away from uh, machine language. So the lowest level language would be, uh, yeah, he says, JC Api says, like C++, you're literally telling it everything to do step by step. Not really. You haven't tried assembly. You haven't tried machine language, zeros and ones. There, you're telling it how to do everything step by step. It's really annoying. It's awful. It takes a lot of time, but at least I can know exactly what's happening. That's true. There's a uh, a lot of detail in uh, these lower level languages. Like if you want to print something in MIPS, you have to uh, first load the thing you want to print into register A0, and then you have to load the correct print syscall into V0. Uh, it's one, two, three, four for string int float. One is string. Int, I think it's, is it int float double string? Yeah. One is int, two is float, three is double, four is string, and five is to read an int, six is to read a float, seven is to read a double, and eight is to read a string. And then when you want it to actually do that, you say syscall. It's really, really awful. Like if you want to print a bunch of, bunch of integers on separate lines, you have to, you know, print the integer and then print a new line. And I ended up making an entire function, which you go to with a, with a branch statement, which is basically a go to, to a label, just to print a new line character. Cause that's, 
that's MIPS for you. It's not actually running MIPS. It's uh, it's on a, a simulator. Because uh, I don't think there's anything being made these days that runs MIPS. It's just not a thing anymore. Like it used to be for some like routers and embedded firmware you occasionally find running MIPS. But nowadays, if you have a, a computer, like what I'm streaming on, or a mobile device, like a, a phone, or a tablet, those run the ARM architecture. And uh, that's, that's kind of it. That's the two major architectures, and uh, MIPS is kind of gone. It's kind of sad our teacher for the computer architecture thing asked us, uh, what are you going to use MIPS for after the class? And everyone's like, I don't know. One student said that he had somehow purchased some development board of something that ran MIPS. I'm like, wow, that sounds like a big hassle to maybe on eBay or something that he found something, something somewhere that runs MIPS. But as far as useful things, uh, no, it's not, we, we don't do that anymore. JC says, uh, yeah, man, you lost me with that hex stuff. Yeah, it's very easy to get lost in hex stuff because people don't count in hex. We count in decimal. Computers are good with hex. So yeah. My classes aren't super useful. Data structures and algorithms where the teacher says, I'm going to teach you how to do these. And when the class is over, please do not use any of this. Like this deck thing, for instance. It's cool and it's fun to write, to write but uh, uh, if you have an actual thing that you want to do, that you want to get done, like a, a game or a web server, I don't know, and you wanted a, a deck, don't use this one. Use the actual one in the standard library because most likely it's written in C. A lot of the stuff in the Python standard library is in the in the C Python implementation, the standard reference one is written in C. That's why they call it C Python. Uh, so when you do like map, for example, the built-in function map, that's, uh, that's just a, a wrapper around a bunch of C code. That's why it's nice and fast. Uh, JC says, to learn a dead language? Yeah, it's a big disclaimer. But yeah, most of the students were like, no, I'm not going to use MIPS. I don't know how I would use MIPS. I, I can't think of any way that I would, but I'm going to learn things right now. People kind of avoiding the question. Because what are you going to say? I don't know why the teacher even asked. Anyway. Uh... So for element and self, this is going to use our iter method, and that's going to go through the deck and check whether each element in it is equal to the item that we're checking, and it's going to return the sum of those. This item equals element is, uh, produces either true or false. True is equal to one. Bool is just a subclass event, so true is one and false is zero. So that'll be the the count. That's that's literally it. Not hard. Uh, maybe extend and extend left. Sure, why not? With uh, iterable. Let's call it other. Extend says extend the right side of the deck by appending elements from the iterable argument. And extend left says extend the left side of the deck by appending elements from iterable. Note the series of left appends results in reversing the order of elements in the iterable argument. So you have you have your, your deck and you have the left for you and the right. Uh, appending or extending something puts it to the right. So if you want to append one, two, three, you would have one, two, three. But if you extend left, 
one, two, three, you get one, and then two, and then three. So if you read from left to right, it would be three to one. It's a bunch of append left. So, um, extend. These are going to be really similar. I can tell you right now. For item in other. That's it, that's all it is. <laughs> uh, Python. It's done. What did that take? Five seconds? Should these... I mean, there's so little. Append or append left? I mean, I'm kind of repeating myself, but also not really. It's, it's so short, like I could have a, a, a generic extend and then have it call something else that uh, passes append or append left, like functional programming. But I mean, Like, I could have a extend and extend left, and extend left would send my... I'll show you. Self, uh, other, and func is what it would be. Uh, for item in other... could do that, but then we would be left with uh, seven lines instead of six. This is called functional programming, by the way, where you're sending as an argument a function that is going to be doing the work, working with functions, not like a functional meaning it functions, it works properly, but like functional meaning you're sending functions around and saying, uh, I might even have uh, a function that returns another function that assembles one somehow, I, but I, I don't, like it could, and this would reduce duplication, I guess, but it's just, I, I, it seems really unnecessary because that's, that's what a pen and pen left. So that's those. Any other easy nonsense? Index. Return the position of x in the deck at or after index start and before index stop. Returns the first match or raises value error if not found. Okay. Self and item. Uh, JC asks, uh, taking the for statement and making a new function out of it. Yes, uh, that was because uh, the, the for loop is the same for item and other, and self.append left is a function, self.append is a function. So for item and other, some function that we want, and item. So it was just a, a wrapper, basically. If we had a whole bunch of possible things to do instead of just two, it might make more sense. And if it was really long, 
if we had many functions instead of just one and two and instead of just having two lines of stuff if it was really big then I would seriously consider doing that uh, or maybe just to uh, have a, a dictionary of some kind I don't know no because we'd want to want to be able to call it like that so yeah I would just have a bunch of small method stubs of uh, def extend left extend right extend up extend down whatever and then uh, would just be it would just call basic basic extend with other and a certain function or method or whatever and then it would happen with that method so if this was really big things then we might want to do that but they're not so we won't index Uh, is there a left index? I don't think so. Okay. Index. Why is that still open? Index. Four. Index well and in rate help if val equals item return index. This is embarrassing. This is too easy. You know, I really thought that I would get like at least four or five streams out of this. But no. someone one of you viewers go through this afterward and add up how much time cumulative I actually spend coding rather than explaining code or talking about my classes or whatever or holding objects and gesticulating mildly so enumerate is a uh, is a function that uh, yields two tuples with an index and an item. So enumerate self would uh, first give us a tuple of zero and the first object in our deck, and then one in the second object. So index starts with zero and val, val is the, the zero with item. And we check if the, the value is the item we're looking for. And if it is, then we return the index it was found. Uh, else raise value error there now instead of just returning none it will raise an error delightful 11 12 uh, print uh, dot I should test all of these shouldn't I Wow, there's a lot of stuff. Clear, copy. I don't want to test these things now. I should. D dot clear. I'm not going to print that. D dot extend. Uh, and this takes an iterable. One, two, three. D dot extend left. Four, five, six. I don't know. JC says uh, that's the helpful, the helpful part. Little bits of how to think in coding languages. Helpful. Extend, extend left. So when I I clear it. When I extend, it's going to be one, two, three. And then when I extend left, I will have four, five, six. So the whole thing will be six, five, four, one, two, three. Six, five, four, one, two, three. 
let's do actually three, four, five, six. So it'll be six, five, four, three, one, two, three. Six, five, four, three, one, two, three. Let's run that right now. Six, five, four, three, one, two, three. Beautiful. Clear it. I need to extend. Extend left. Six, five, four, three, one, two, three. Very nice. Uh, extend left. Uh, copy. Uh, copy, count, and index. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Python does not distinguish between different objects of different types when you're naming them. If you have my number equals one, and then later you do my number equals a string of hello world, that will be fine. And the number will be gone. So if you have self.count equals zero, no, first, first we have count being this method because it's, you know, defined. And then we actually create this, uh, this instance, this object. And we say self.count is zero. So it's no longer that function. It's just zero. Uh, I'm going to rename this to quantity. zero there are zero of those and the index of three is zero one two three I kind of want to do more stuff remove reverse oh in place huh JC says, uh, I watched the Tetris one and the forming the first tetramation or whatever. That's, that's what I feel coding actually is. Yes. Getting things done and having them work is really cool. I like that part. Um, collections. Let's, let's do insert. Actually, how about Max Len? Max len is an argument you can pass that is the maximum size. 
So if we say max line is 3, and we have a deck of 3 items, and we add something to this side, the, the thing on this end goes away. So we still have 3 items. Let's do that. And this isn't a, a method. This is a making changes to existing methods. So none. Maxlen equals maxlen. Um okay. So this is when we append or append left is when it will happen. Um, crease. If max len, so if max len is truthy, meaning not none or zero, and is now greater than max len, that means we have a problem. Append and self.pop left. Instead of, so we have append and pop, or append and pop, append left and pop left. This is the left for you. Uh, so if we append something and it's no good or it's it's too much stuff then we will pop left and if we append left and it's too much we will pop this is self append append left just before we return thing for when I extend, yes. a max len and uh, and quantity so instead of an if because that's only doing it once I'm gonna say while we have a max len and the quantity is too much we want to pop left or simply pop. Easy peasy. Um, actually, do we need that? I don't think we do. If we have a max len for this deck, then it's keeping track of that every time we append or append left and extend it just and extend, extend left, use append and append left. So it will be an appropriate size and then we add a bunch of things onto it. And so that's, we don't actually need any of this. because append left already has this logic.
图。Lots of changes without writing them down, huh? There's a max len. There's a name of stuff.、Uh, count to quantity. Um, um, um. Pen left. Pen left. Clear. Copy. Count. Here, copy, count, extend, extend, left, and index. That's lots of stuff and things. Fantastic. Do I have index? Not in there. Index、uh, zero. Value error. Okay.、Uh, what does an actual one? Repro of the thing is let's let's do that. Value error. It's a format string. Repro of the item is not in. Okay, and let's run it again. Zero is not in deck. Okay, let's get that out of the way.、Um, what now? We got. There's more bugs. It's very warm this week, even though it's. Late October already, and it's like eighty or ninety during the day. It's very silly.、Um, insert. We haven't done yet. Oh, there's a start and a stop value. Okay. At or after start. And gotta add that then. Start and stop. Let's do that. Index. Start equals zero. Stop equals.、Um, uh, this will just evaluate it once, will it? I don't want that. Item and we'll have to stop equals stop or stop quantity. There. So if we aren't sent a stop value. It will default to the quantity. If I put self dot quantity in here, it would calculate it once, because、uh, and this is this important.、Um, uh, default. 
parameters are evaluated when the function is defined. Uh, so it would be zero if we put it in there, because it starts at zero. But uh, we want to have a new one every time it's called. So we're going to have none and uh, zero. Uh, I want to do between start less than or equal to index. Is this less equal? at or after start and before stop. Non-inclusive for that one. Yes, this should work. Less than, stop. So start defaults to zero and stop has a default value and the parameter as zero but we reassign it. So if it, if it is zero, then uh, meaning they didn't pass another chosen value, or if it's zero, it will say, well, that's zero. How about maybe the next one is choosy? And then we'll return this. This is short circuiting. It's handy. Uh, I also could have done uh, if not stop, stop equals self dot quantity. But this is short and simple. Stop equals stop or self dot quantity. So that'll be if there's 10 items, it'll be 10. And the maximum index will be nine. Less than 10. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, in the deck but not somewhere that we specify dot index one starting at one not in deck okay just raise that exception fine by me so this is only if it's valid index. Great. Do, 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 do. Where, what, where, oh, what am I doing? Uh, testing index, uh, dot index three, and then zero, three, zero, one, two, three, four. Let's start at four. Starting at index four, this should get the last one. So first we have three. Now instead of three, it should go four, five, six. Is what I think it will do. It did. Three and six. Splendid. Splendid. Um. Insert, remove, reverse, and rotate. These might be a little larger. Um, oh. Oh, insert says if the insertion would cause a bounded deck to grow beyond max line, an index error is raised. Mm -hmm. If you insert something into the middle, which side do you remove? Uh, 
maybe these would be good for next time. Next time we will have insert. I think I missed. Drat. Insert, remove, reverse, and rotate. Rotate basically, you, you have an iterable, and say you have two parts, rotate uh, at, at this point right here, would, would do that. That's rotate. Okay. This is good for now. It has an error, but that's okay, because it's supposed to have an error. Um... I think that's <coughs> I think that's pretty good. So we made a bunch of changes and additions to the, to the kind of basic framework. Um, by the way, this else is attached to the for, not the if. The else is uh, executed if the for loop completes in its entirety and is not broken out of or ended prematurely. So if this whole thing goes through, then the else is executed. I guess that's not actually necessary because this isn't a break, this is a return. Not even necessary. Who cares? Same result. Good. Yeah. That's not necessary. So we go through the whole thing, and if we go through the whole thing without returning anything, we say, uh, error, we didn't find it. Should I say between start and stop? No. I'm not doing that. Index green index start and stop. How about that? That you can't see what I wrote. Index start and stop. See? There you have it. Between index zero and seven. There we go. That's a little a little more clear. Uh okay. That's, uh, I think that's the stream for today. We did, uh, we refactored the iter bool. We refactored dq.iter, dq.bool. Uh, we rewrote I stunned it. know if that's it's 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 quieter than the than the zapper but i don't i don't know where it went and i don't have you know bug on my hands and i don't see it on the desk right smooch anyway this is not a vegan friendly stream apparently um dq.bool dq.iter dq.bool node.repro we added the maxlen attribute. Um, we changed count to quantity. And we added clear, copy, count, extend, extend left, and index. Next time, we'll have insert, remove, reverse, and rotate. And uh, the other link to the Python documentation in the description of this video is to the Python data model and specifically to the section on special methods. And uh, Note that when I made a copy of the deck, I just printed it to see what it was, and I looked at the old one and the new one to see if they were the same. Um, I'll want to implement 
methods like double underscore eq double underscore, which checks if one object is equal to another. And then I could uh, just zip them and go through both of them and see if all the elements are equal. And if they are, then great. Then that would, I would say, return, you know, true or whatever. Uh, or, you know, return an all something. Return something and all. Would be like return uh, len self equals len other and all a equals b for a b in zip self other. Something like that. I think I just wrote it. Oops. That's that's EQ. Not not today. Python. It's not hard. Some people when writing other languages write pseudocode and they end up writing Python. Or almost Python. Like if you put a colon here, you can run that and you're done. So I write pseudocode and it ends up already being the code. Sorry to Python. Python's pretty good. Anyway. That's what we did this time. That's what we'll do next time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the stream, learned some Python stuff. Uh, someone count up my cumulative coding time. Um, would be interesting to see what percentage of time I actually need to spend writing Python to get Python stuff done. And uh, Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I will, uh, JC says good night, and good night indeed. I will see you next time. Have a good one.